Hi friends! After spending a week in San Francisco, we drove back down to LA on the legendary Pacific Ocean Highway 101 that actually starts up north near the Canadian border and stretches all the way down to San Diego. On our four-day trip on this route, we visited some unique locations like the swing, this shark fin shaped cove rock, the surfer coast in Santa Cruz, this picturesque waterfall, the world's ugliest waterfall, Solvang, Malibu, and many more. Just a couple of miles south of San Francisco, there's an old stretch of the old Highway 101 called Devil's Slide. Welcome to the old Highway 101. The road itself offers great views and is an interesting spot for bird watching. If you're into that, we aren't. And the more interesting stop is at the other end of Devil's Slide, just after this tunnel. There's an old bunker sitting on the cliff that originates from World War II. After this quick stop, we continued south. If you're into beautiful beaches, Montera State Beach is one of the last ones for a long time as the coastline becomes rougher with every mile. south, Pescadero Beach was another quick stop for us. Often you can spot some seals in the water in this area. Just three minutes south, there's a picnic spot at Bean Hollow Beach, also worth checking out. It takes another five minutes to get to the Pitchen Point Lighthouse that was built in 1871 and with 35 meters it's the tallest lighthouse on the US west coast. There's also an exhibition on site. After the lighthouse there are many more stops to check out that offer similar view of the coastline. Traveling about 50 miles, you'll arrive in a small town called Davenport, which is a great opportunity for a lunch break in the Whale City Bakery. Okay, Miki, can you describe why you are so happy? <laughs> 
<laughs> this okay. is the reason. Mm, it's one of the best brownies I've ever had. It's really chocolatey. And we got it from there. Davenport also has a nice little beach with beautiful cliffs. A couple of hundred meters north, there's the remaining of the former Davenport Pier that was destroyed in a storm a long time ago. down to the pier, you have to climb down a very steep, slippery path with the rope attached on site. If you make it down to the beach, your reward is the access to the swing that's on the first pillar of the former pier. Just a mile south of Devonport, you can also visit the Shark Fin Cove that has received its name due to the big rock sitting in the middle of the cove that looks like a shark fin. Here we also witnessed one of the most colorful sunsets of our road trip. We spent the night in Santa Cruz, which is just 9 miles south of Devonport. The next day we checked out some other stops like the Laguna Creek and the 4 mile beach. Back in Santa Cruz, you can visit the Natural Bridge Beach. Today, there is only one natural bridge in this rock, but there was also a second arch until it collapsed in 1980. Right next to this beach, the West Cliff Drive starts, which is another beautiful location for a quick walk along the coastline. We continued on to the famous Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, which is a small amusement park. Families with kids will love a visit, and as you can see, these were pre-COVID times. First, we hesitated to check out the pier next to the park, but it is well worth it. There are dozens of seals playing and chilling on the foundation poles of the pier. For the sunset, we drove to Pleasure Point, which resembles the Westcliff Drive coastline, but here you can also check out a lot of surfers, which is no surprise. 
Santa Cruz is also known as the surf city of the US. Day, we drove 40 miles south to Monterey and spent a day there. Fisherman's Wharf is right next to the marina and offers a lot of touristy shops worth checking out. of it, you can stroll along Ocean View Boulevard. Point Park, there's a cute little surprise waiting for you. We don't mean the seagulls. We're talking about these little guys that will approach you and beg you for food. There are some hidden gems to check out, such as Perkins Park, the Kissing Rocks, or the Point Pinos Lighthouse in the very north of Monterey. Now a word on Pebble Beach gated community and Sunset Drive which may TripAdvisor's mark as a highlight of Monterey. Spoiler alert, it is not. You giving some money away? Hmm? 10 bucks 50. Sure, there are a couple of nice overlooks and you can also visit the famous long cypress tree along the way. But for us, it wasn't worth the $10.50 entry fee. Just south of Pebble Beach, we stopped at Carmel by the Sea before we continued to drive south on Highway 101. Ten miles south of Monterey, Garapata State Park offers a great view of the coastline with a beautifully colorful contrast. This marks the beginning of the most famous stretch of Highway 101 
also known as Big Sur. Just 10 minutes further down the road, you'll arrive at one of the most iconic attractions, the Bixby Bridge. After driving by the Point Sur Lighthouse, where you have to book a tour in advance to visit, we had lunch in the Nepente restaurant 15 miles south of Bixby Bridge. As it is incredibly popular, you probably have to wait for about an hour until you get a table, but the food and view are absolutely worth it. It's good. Along this section of Highway 101, you'll find many small lookout points where you can stop and take in the view. About six miles south, make sure you don't miss the Partington Cove, which is a cool hidden gem. Here you have to walk down a short trail and cross this wooden bridge to get to a tunnel. On the other side you'll find a cove, which is a cool place to relax after having lunch. But don't waste too much time here, as the next highlight is just two miles away. The Mech Way Falls drop on the beach into the ocean and the best spot to see them is from a small parking spot just before the Julia Piper State Park entry sign. Unfortunately, it is not possible to climb down to the beach. So we continued to drive south and as the sun got lower we arrived at the Salmon Creek Falls which are located about 30 miles south of the McWay Falls. You can find them after a short 10 minute hike from the parking lot and as the sun was setting we made another short stop at Ragged Point and then drove to San Simeon another 20 miles south to spend the night.
The next day, we drove back a couple of miles to check out the Elephant Seal Vista Park. Compared to the ones at Point Reyes near San Francisco, there's a lot more action going on here. After half an hour, we made another quick stop in Cayucos, which is a cool little surfer town. It is located in the north of the Morro Bay, which has its name due to the famous Morro Rock a couple of miles south. Morro Rock is a volcanic plug, which is created when magma inside an active volcano hardens. After this quick stop, we drove down to Pismo Beach, which is a popular vacation destination. The Oceana Dunes in Pismo Beach is the only location in California where you are allowed to drive and even go camping on the beach with your vehicle, which is a very unique experience. We're here at the beach in our car. And this is one of the only beaches you can drive on in California. We actually did the remaining part of the Pacific Ocean Highway a couple of weeks before we drove up north to the national parks and to San Francisco and headed inland after visiting the Oceano Dunes. So we saved this last stretch of the Pacific Ocean Highway from Pismo Beach to LA for the ending of this video. South of Pismo Beach, the highway leads inland and if you drive about an hour to the south, you'll arrive in Denmark. No, just kidding, this isn't Denmark, but at first glance, you'd think it was. This town is called Solvang, and it was founded in 1911, as many Danish immigrants moved to California and settled down here. The Danish architecture and culture is omnipresent, and you can find dozens of cute little shops all around the town. When visiting Solvang, you absolutely have to try their apple skivers, which is a very delicious sweet Danish pastry. We couldn't help ourselves and we have found another waterfall just 15 minutes outside of Solvang, called the Noyuki Falls. South of Solvang, the highway leads back to the coast and 46 miles south, we made another quick stop in Santa Barbara. Along the old town State Street, you will find many opportunities to go shopping.
Nearby, you can also find the largest Martin Bay fig tree in the US. After visiting the town, we drove up into the hillside to hike to the inspiration point. It takes about an hour to get to the top that provides a beautiful view over Santa Barbara. About an hour south of Santa Barbara lies Malibu, where we checked out four interesting locations. First, Malibu has a cute little village to go out eating or shopping. At the start of the village, there's also a beautiful lagoon to relax. Along the highway, you can find the parking lot to access the Escondido Falls. But as this hike is very popular, almost everyone parks at the side of the road. It takes about 20 minutes to get to the trailhead in the middle of a residential area and it takes another 20 minutes to reach the first Escondido Fall. If you want to see the upper fall, you have to climb up a very steep and slippery hill. Why should I do that, you ask? Well, to see the, in our opinion, ugliest waterfall in the world. Is it worth it? You decide. The third location worth visiting in Malibu is Point Dune. Here you can check out some trails along the cliffs that offer a beautiful view. A couple of minutes north of Malibu, El Matador Beach is the last stop we cover in this video. Visiting is especially beautiful just before sunset and unsurprisingly this spot is popular among photographers and tourists. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to get our latest videos. In our next video, we leave the coast and drive inland to some very special locations in the Californian desert.